Introduction How many students are there in the class? Sir, 35. How many students have height more than 3 feet? There are 5 students. And how many girls are here? Oh, there are many girls. Do you know why I am asking these questions? No. I am taking data of your class. Data? Yes. And today I will explain everything about data. Come, let's start. Objectives At the end of this lesson you will be able to Define data Define statistics Draw bar graph, histogram and frequency polygon Define mean, median and mode Calculate mean, median and mode Definition we know that the facts or figures, which are numerical or otherwise collected with a definite purpose, are called data. Data is the plural form of the Latin word datum. The word statistics is derived from the Latin word status, meaning a political state. Statistics deals with collection, organization, analysis and interpretation of data. Collection of data there are two types of data. One is primary data and the other is secondary data. Primary data. When the information is collected by the investigator herself or himself with a definite objective in her or his mind, then the data obtained is called primary data. Secondary data. When the information is gathered from a source which already has the information stored, the data then obtained, is called secondary data. Such data which has been collected by someone else in another context needs to be used with great care ensuring that the source is reliable. Presentation of data After the collection of data, the investigator has to find out ways to present them in a form which is meaningful and easily understood. Let us now go through some examples which show us the various ways of presenting the data. Look at these numbers. These numbers are the marks obtained by 10 students in subject science. The data in this form is called raw data. The lowest mark obtained by the student is 25 and the highest mark obtained by the student is 95. If we write these numbers in ascending or descending order, then it would be easy for us to see the highest or the lowest marks. Presentation of data in ascending or descending order can be quite time-consuming, particularly when the number of observations in an experiment is large. So this is the ascending order. Now we can clearly see that the lowest marks are 25 and the highest marks are 95. The difference of the highest and the lowest values in the data is called the range of the data. So the range in this case is 95 minus 25 which is equal to 70 frequency look at these numbers now these are the marks obtained by 20 students in subject science the highest number scored here is 10 we can see that two students have scored 10 marks so the frequency of 10 is 2 the number of students who have obtained a certain number of marks is called the frequency of those marks we can write this data in a table form to make it more understandable. These are the marks and these are the frequencies. We can call this table as an ungrouped frequency distribution table or simply a distribution table. Grouped frequency distribution table. Sometimes we have got large amount of data. So, to present such a large amount of data, we condense it into groups like 0 to 3. 4 to 7, and so on, till 16 to 19, since our data is from 1 to 18. These groupings are called classes or class intervals, and their size is called class size or class width. Here the size is 4. In each of these classes, the least number is called the lower class limit, and the greatest number is called the upper class limit. 
For example, in 0 to 3, 0 is the lower class limit and 3 is the upper class limit. These kinds of tables are called grouped frequency distribution table. Graphical representation of data. When the data is presented pictorially or graphically before the learners, it makes the presentation eye-catching and more intelligible. There are many forms of representing data graphically. They are bar graph, histograms of uniform width and of varying widths, and frequency polygons. Let's go through them one by one. Bar graph. We know that a bar graph is a pictorial representation of data in which usually bars of uniform width are drawn with equal spacing between them on one axis, say the x-axis, depicting the variable. The values of the variable are shown on the other axis, say the y-axis, and the heights of the bars depend on the values of the variable. Let us take one example to read the bar graphs. Observe this bar graph. This represents the number of chocolates that Nina ate last week. Now can you tell which day did she eat the most number of chocolates? We can see that on Thursday she ate most number of chocolates. Drawing bar graphs. Now we will learn how to draw the bar graph. Look at this table. This shows the data of the expenditure of the family with a monthly income of 20,000. Let us draw a bar graph of this data. For making the bar graph, we use the things given on horizontal axis and expenditure on vertical axis. Mark the things and the expenditure on both the axis. Here one means 1,000, two means 2,000. Now to represent our first thing, that is, grocery, we have to make a bar of unit 4. Similarly, other things are represented leaving a gap of one unit in between two consecutive bars. Histogram Like a bar chart, a histogram is made up of columns plotted on a graph. Usually, there is no space between adjacent columns. It is used for continuous intervals. Look at this frequency table. And look at its class intervals. These intervals are continuous. This frequency table represents the weight of 36 students. To plot the horizon, we represent the weights on the horizontal axis and the number of students on the vertical axis. Since the maximum frequency is 15, we need to choose this scale to accommodate the maximum frequency. Also, since the first class interval is starting from 30.5, and not zero, we show it on the graph by marking a break on the axis. Let us now draw the rectangle for the class interval 30.5 to 35.5 of length 9 cm. Similarly, we draw the other rectangles. This is called a histogram. Frequency polygon In a frequency polygon, a line graph is drawn by joining all the midpoints of the top of the bars of a histogram. Frequency polygons can also be drawn independently without drawing histograms. For this, we require the midpoints of the class intervals used in the data. These midpoints of the class intervals are called class marks. To find the class mark of a class interval, we find the sum of the upper limit and lower limit of a class and divide it by 2. Thus, class mark is equal to upper limit plus lower limit whole upon 2. Frequency polygon is very useful for comparing two different sets of data of the same nature. For example, comparing the performance of two football teams of the same school. Measures of central tendency. The term central tendency refers to the middle value or a typical value of the data and is measured by using mean, median, or mode. Let's go through them one by one. Mean. The mean, or average of a number of observations, is the sum of the values of all the observations divided by the total number of observations. It is denoted by this symbol, read as x bar. Median. 
The median is that value of the given number of observations which divides it into exactly two parts. When the number of observations that is n is odd, the median is the value of the n plus 1 whole upon 2th observation. For example, if n is equal to 13, then the median will be the value of 13 plus 1 whole upon 2th, that is 7th observation. And when the number of observations n is even, the median is the mean of the n upon 2th and the n upon 2 plus 1th observations. For example, if n is equal to 16, then the medium will be mean of the values of 16 upon 2th and 16 upon 2 plus 1th observations, that is, the mean of the values of the 8th and 9th observations. The last one is mode. The mode is that value of the observation which occurs most frequently, that is, an observation with the maximum frequency is called the mode. Examples Let us now solve some examples. Mount Rival hosts a soccer tournament each year. This season, in 10 games, the lead score for the home team scored 7, 5, 0, 7, 8, 5, 5, 4, 4 and 5 goals. What was the mean score? Let us use a variable, xi, to denote the ith observation. In this case, I can take the values from 1 to 10. So, our first observation is x1. Second observation is x2 and so on till x10. Here x1 is equal to 7 means the value of the first observation. Similarly, x2 is equal to 5, x3 is equal to 0, x4, 7, x5, 8, x6, 5, x7, 5, x8, 4, x9, 4, 8, which is equal to 8, and x10 is 5. Therefore the mean x bar is equal to sum of all the observations upon total number of observations which is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 plus x7 plus x8 plus x9 plus x10 by 10 which is equal to 7 plus 5 plus 0 plus 7 plus 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 by 10. This is equal to 50 by 10 which equals 5. Hence the mean score is 5. If the observations are large for example up to x30 then it would take a lot of time to calculate mean. To solve such problems, we use the Greek symbol sigma for summation. So instead of writing x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus so on till x30, we write it in this way, which is read as the sum of xi as i varies from 1 to 30. For an ungrouped frequency, it is examples. Find the mode of the following marks out of 10 obtained by 20 students. We know that the mode is that value of the observation which occurs most frequently. Let's arrange these marks in ascending order. We can see that 9 is occurring more frequently. So we can say that 9 is the mode of the marks. Assessment Let us know how much have you learned. Click the correct option. Did you know? The word statistics have been derived from Latin word status or the Italian word statista. Meaning of these words is political state or a government. Shakespeare used the word statist in his drama Hamlet in 1602. In the past, the statistics was used by rulers. The application of statistics was very limited, but rulers and kings needed information about lands, agriculture, commerce, population of their states to assess their military potential, their wealth, taxation and other aspects of government. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Facts or figures collected with a definite purpose are called data. 
Statistics is the area of study dealing with the presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. The three measures of central tendency for ungrouped data are Mean It is found by adding all the values of the observations and dividing it by the total number of observations. It is denoted by X. So, for an ungrouped frequency distribution, it is Median it is the value of the middlemost observations. If n is an odd number, the median is equal to value of the n plus 1 whole upon 2th observation. If n is an even number, median is equal to mean of the values of the n upon 2th and n upon 2 plus 1th observations. Mode The mode is the most frequently occurring observation.